So I thought it would be a good idea to provide a little map and that little red star and this address will help you find where the trailhead is because it is actually very hard to find if you don't know the area. It, uh, the first time I was trying to find it, I had a hard time. So uh, if you follow that address and the instructions, um, you'll, you'll have no problem finding it. It's between two houses. You can see it's not very well marked. The yellow arrow is showing the Bruce Trail sign and the red arrow is showing the start of the pathway to the trailhead. And there is free parking on the street. Just don't obviously block anyone's driveway and be respectful. So there you can see the pathway between the two houses and a few signs here at the trailhead. So they encourage the dogs to be leashed. And there's information from the Bruce Trail on the area and the name of it. And a resident has posted a sign, which I agree with, about littering and uh, keeping the area clean. And then trail markers or blazes and what they mean and how to identify them. And this trail runs along 40 Mile Creek. If you choose the other trail on the other side of the creek, uh, there is another one that's part of the Bruce Trail. It actually goes along Mountain Street and goes up to Ridge Road. So you want to choose this one if you want to go along the creek, which I got to say at this day that I went was kind of a raging torrent of a river instead of a creek, but uh, that's understandable as we had a couple of days of rain. So uh, everything was uh, flowing pretty fast. As you'll see here, this is kind of the first little lookout. So as you head up into the trail, if you branch off to your left, you can kind of get a view of the uh, bottom portion of the creek. And I would say this is not normal conditions. Uh, we've had a few days of fairly heavy rain, so um, just be aware, not only the pathways were fairly muddy and slippery, um, you don't want to go too close to the creek because there is a danger. And there's portions where it's really narrow and it's all white water and then they're a little bit further up it widens and it's not as bad but uh, still you got to be uh, aware of you know the danger of fast moving water and stay well clear of it so you do have to have a decent hiking experience and it is considered moderate so yeah there's interesting rock formations a couple of fossils here and there uh, huge boulders that are breaking away from the escarpment so really good photographic opportunities. But there you can see uh, yeah, it's pretty pretty dangerous if you were to get too close in you know, a raging torrent of water. And at the first portion of the trail, there's a, a few side trails that go kind of up, and I'm not sure where they go. I've never been on them, but I'm assuming they go below the escarpment uh, edge. So I'll have to explore that one day. So lots of neat vegetation, lots of moss. So one interesting thing I found out about 40 Mile Creek is I always thought the namesake came from how far away it is from like Niagara River or Niagara Falls. But the other story, which I guess I can believe, is that the American Revolution happened and then in 1787 they say 40 families reached the Niagara area. All the land was taken around uh, close to Niagara Falls in the Niagara region. So they ended up in the Grimsby area and they called it the 40. So that was the name of Grimsby before that. Um, same with 20 Mile Creek. I thought that was uh, 20 miles away from the river or the falls, but that's false. So if you look at the distance from 40 Mile Creek to Niagara Falls or Niagara River, it's only about 28 miles. So there you go. I'm not sure which story to believe, but uh, I did some research and uh, that was one of the stories. So yeah, there you can see some scenes along the trail. Um, I did venture down to the river and keeping a respectful distance. Now being early spring, just after winter, there's a lot of fallen trees and uh, some parts of the trail uh, almost inaccessible. So you, you do have to make a decision whether you want to go as far as I did. I wasn't able to actually get to the bottom of Beamer Falls. I'll show you in a minute how far I did get. But uh, the problem is that with all the fallen trees and the mud, it actually becomes quite dangerous if you keep going up the river, or I should say creek, but at this point it's a river with the how how fast it was flowing. And you can certainly understand, seeing the power of this water, why they 
settle this area and use the power of the water to run grist and uh, a wood saw mill at the top where they dammed the uh, upper portion of the river before it cascades over the escarpment. Uh, they had some control over the water and it ran a mill. So uh, days like this, yeah, it's crazy, but this is not the normal flow. Obviously, we've had several days of rain. So this is as far as I got. So this is kind of the last picture before I kind of headed up the escarpment and headed back. And you can see the trail there up ahead uh, is, is quite uh, on a on an angle and uh, a grade. So it's slippery. I didn't want to take a chance. I did fall once, but just a slide on the mud. So it's not really worth it. Uh, on a drier day, I might go a little bit further. There you can see a couple of fallen trees. Uh, and there's also a set of stairs that I link up to. If you watch my first video, you'll see uh, there's a set of stairs leading down. And this is uh, the way you get back up. And I did have Nellie, our uh, soft coated wheat and terrier with us. So she's good at stopping when I ask her to. So if I did, you know, a couple of close up pictures, uh, she was good at just kind of waiting for me. Now, not every dog is like her. So uh, if they start to pull you down, <laughs> down in an embankment or something towards the river, you got to be really careful. The other thing you want to do is also look up because it's the spring hawk migration. So even from down in the valley, you can see the raptors, uh, you know, whether it's turkey vultures, eagles, falcons, hawks, um, they're still up there. And once in a while, when the, when there's a good updraft, you'll see them circling overhead. So yeah, hopefully I'm not making you too dizzy with this shot, but uh, very fascinating to see them soaring up above, especially in the early spring, you can see through the trees. And as you can see, parts of the creek are wider and uh, not as seemingly treacherous. So. But yeah, I did start heading back because it did get narrow and, I, and there, I couldn't make any progress going up to the falls, unfortunately. There you can see the side of the escarpment and a few uh, big ledges sticking out. So always interesting to see the edge of the Niagara escarpment and, uh, uh, you know, it's home for bats and birds and all kinds of creatures. And sometimes you'll see little, little waterfalls, whether it's from a stream up above or sometimes they actually come right out of the, uh, the rock itself. Maybe not this one, but uh, yeah, it's best to view them from a distance. It, I wouldn't venture up there just to be safe. So this is the uh, pathway headed back down the river. Fairly well maintained. But yeah, nice uh, scenic walk along the 40 Mile Creek lower portion of Beamer Memorial Conservation Area. A little bit more challenging than the upper portion, I would say. So I would just take your time, you know, take a break once in a while. Um, be careful close to the creek itself, especially this time of year or after a rainfall. Um, a couple of fallen trees here and there. So yeah, it's a bit challenging. But I wanted to show you what the lower portion is because that uh, can be quite nice to, uh, to venture down there. And towards the end of the, the trail where it comes to Gibson Street, uh, it's quite nice because there's some houses and uh, for Scythia this time of year. And coming up at the end of the video here, where we go back between the two houses and uh, which leads to Gibson Street. Gibson Street will also lead to a pedestrian bridge that crosses 40 Mile Creek. And I was told that it's currently closed. Now, whether they're uh, reconstructing it, I'm not sure what's going on, but hopefully they'll, there you see it. Uh, hopefully they'll open it again soon, but you can see where it crosses. Uh, to the other side is Mountain Street, pretty much the other side of Gibson, uh, Bruce Trail area, and Mountain Street. So this eventually drains into Lake Ontario, goes under the Queen Elizabeth Way Highway. So thanks for watching everyone. I hope you found this interesting. Please subscribe for more videos, and bye for now.